So what do the vineyard chicks know about off-grid living and permaculture? More than you'd think. Even though our more recent videos were filmed on our newer property, we've only had that property for a few years and our permaculture isn't very far along. This property, however, we've had longer than we've had Bunky. Our real background to having a vineyard started here and I thought you guys would like to see a bit of the backstory of how the Vineyard Chicks got into off-grid living and permaculture. And it started out as an overgrown mess. It was an abandoned apple orchard that had wild grapevines and poison ivy everywhere and, well, it looked like this. Now we have 2,500 grapevines here and it looks great and this, this cabin behind us started out as an old shed the same year Bunky was born and now we've turned it into a three season off-grid living cabin. And in this video, I'm going to show you how you can take your poultry, your pastured poultry and goats for meat and milk and turn a wild property like we had into a permaculture vineyard like we did. So stay tuned. So this cabin, it's getting a little bit old, but we are in the process of restaining it. And we've got a lot of great memories. This is a huge part of our childhood. In a couple of minutes, Trey will show a full cabin tour and wait till the very end to see pictures of when I was a baby and KK and Trey were very tiny. This property used to be a mess. It used to be an abandoned orchard and it was totally overgrown. There was five leaf creeper, poison ivy, wild grapevines, thorns, um, a few seasons with goats and cutting down some trees. We were eventually able to run our chicken tractors through this property and it went really well. If you'll look here, because we dug this out because we're, dad's trying to put in some water piping from the watershed into the cabin so we can entertain and have some guests here. If you look at where we dug it up, the soil is completely sand. And if running chicken tractors through here can get enough organic material over the sand that it can grow grapes and grass, imagine what it can do for your overgrown areas. The very first thing we did was surround the property with a very unique fence. Please leave a comment if you think you can tell how we made our first goat fence. There lies the last apple tree that we left on the property that just blew down in a recent storm. I can still remember dad toppling the rest of them with a rented bobcat. We have golden muscat all over here and it might be my favorite kind of grape. I just love how they look. And these last two rows are a squela muscat and the entire back half of the property is filled with traminette. And traminette are also really pretty golden colored grapes, but they're pretty small. And then this hail is really cool in the winter. You can sled down it. Um, towards the back is Cabernet Sauvignon, and then past those rows is Cabernet Franc. This may not look like much of a garden, but before we turn this property into a vineyard, there were actually some beneficial weeds growing here. So we like having milkweed here so that monarch butterflies will come onto our property. And we like having mullein growing here because there are a lot of uses for that too. And these will continue to grow and thrive in our little prairie garden. Look how tall this mullein can grow and the tops can be used as candles. Tall candle. I'd like to welcome you into the Vineyard Chicks Off-Grid Cabin. When we got this cabin, it didn't originally have a, well, a ceiling or nice walls. We had all of this installed when I was like six. We put it together ourselves and now it looks really, really cool. The ceiling I think used to be higher, <laughs> but we had a bed, we put in a bedroom, we put in flooring and, and we've, we stayed in this cabin a whole lot of weekends back when we were little. And this is just a really huge part of when I was growing up and I really love this place. This is the bedroom part and we, this is pretty much where we slept. We had a cot, sometimes we'd lay down some sleeping bags, there's a window. And we were in the process of putting in electricity 
and lights, but we never quite got to finishing that. We probably will eventually. This is pretty much like the living room area of the cabin. We've got a futon here, so most of the time it's a couch, but we can put it down on a, as a bed if we need to. We have a propane heater right here, and it is so good that it would heat up this entire place during the winter, and it just runs on propane, so this was a really cool thing to have in the winter. We still have to finish the ceiling in some spots, but there's an attic so we can go up there. And this is pretty much where we'd hang out, we'd eat dinner, breakfast, and lunch. And this is like the living room area. This I think qualifies as the kitchen maybe. We have a table and a sink. We always keep some soap and paper towels here in case we need anything. And since we never quite got all the electricity, we always have a lantern here. And there's a battery operated clock. This is pretty much our pantry. We're going to have a real sink here soon and we're gonna put in a shower in the bathroom area and a toilet. But I mean, if you don't mind a bit of rough living, I think this is a great place to camp. And I honestly enjoyed living here a whole lot. And we spent a whole lot of time here and it's just a really great place. And I hope what I showed you here today, you can apply to how you're trying to become off-grid in your permaculture setting. and I hope you'll be able to join us as we make this cabin back here more suitable for people who want to stay here who aren't as hardcore camper as we were when we were little and staying here with no electricity or no plumbing and all of that. So I hope you'll be able to join us on that journey.